Welcome to the show, Dr. Perry. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be with you. Well, I'm pleased to have you. I know you've had a very busy schedule. I've I've checked you out on the internet and I saw that you were booked for the next few months. So this is really a treat to have you here. Thank you. It goes both ways. You've accomplished so much. You're a doctor, an author, a speaker, and now even a talk show host. How did your past have anything to do with your success? Well, I'm very fortunate in that I've had the opportunity to be able to experience life from the bottom of the boot. Um, Different people see their upbringing differently, and I see the way I was brought up as a benefit. What that specifically means is I didn't want to be there anymore. What I wanted to do is I wanted to be in a position where I could help others. So it inspired me to grind hard and identify people who I felt could be helpful in my pursuits of helping others. You know, I've read a little bit about your background, and it wasn't so easy for you. You come from the projects, is that correct? I do. You come from the projects. Your mother was a white 16-year-old girl, and it was hard back then. So was no, that was. was that was that a, a the fuel for your passion? Yeah, uh, part of it. Um, I hated being broke, and I didn't want to have other people experience what I experienced. Um, for me, it wasn't fun, but it was all that I had known. I didn't know how poor I was until I started to go into other communities, and I started to realize that people actually live a lot better than I do. And I wanted to have not just my my own life better, but more importantly, people I cared about. You know, I find it so strange how uh, most young people that are disadvantaged, to come from a disadvantaged background, seem to strive. They seem to work hard, harder than some of the children that have it. Why do you think that is? I think for those people who do come from historically disadvantaged populations and overcome it, what we see is that we have an obligation to work harder than everybody else. It's a challenge, even as a father of two middle-class black boys, uh, to try and get them to understand that you have an advantage. Use it. You know, I've been listening to some of your speeches. I I like to do some homework on my guests when they come on the show. So I may, you know, look at some videos and, and, you know, see what they've been doing. And you're very passionate about the quality of education for children. And you speak to educators and organizations on how to better their system in educating children and you drive a hard point because I was watching you and I, I, you was like, bam, bam. You was like hitting them over the head. And I was saying even ouch. So um, and then you walked off the straight stage like a rock star. I saw you. Well, I, <laughs> I saw you. But what tell tell the audience what exactly is your mission? What are you trying to uh, say to these educators and accomplish? I believe that every child has something inside them that makes them extraordinary and that it's our responsibility to do all we can to go in and excavate what makes them extraordinary. Um, I think that it is problematic for us to presume that because somebody is growing up in what feels like a disadvantaged situation, that they are not capable of being successful. Additionally, You know, even as a father, um, I acknowledge that it's tough raising kids, and we all need the support of professionals. Even I do. So if that is your role in children's lives, take it seriously. Recognize it's a blessing that you have to help other people's kids. 